Hello learners. In this lecture, we will see how to prepare a S5 schedule that is called as manpower schedule. You can see it here, right? I have written a manpower schedule and this is called a S5 schedule. See, there are a lot of schedules that we need to understand. But since it's a basic course, I'll be explaining only three to four different schedule. So the first was a baseline schedule. Then we try to prepare the S0 schedule, right? Then we try to prepare S1 schedule. Then we try to prepare S6 schedule. Uh, that is about the bulk materials and now what we are preparing is a s5 schedule that is for the manpower right in this way we need to prepare each and every schedule now coming to the manpower first we need to understand all these things see for shuttering work i require a carpenter and a helper right so it's a one carpenter and one helper similarly for the reinforcement work i require one bar bender and one helper similarly in 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 case of pcc work we'll we'll differentiate them in terms of unskilled labors and also PCC work for masons. Similarly, when it comes to the concreting work, we are going to differentiate them in terms of masons and also unskilled labors. Then again, for the masonry work, it's again the masons, the unskilled. Ceiling plastering, again, the masons, the again, unskilled. For wall plastering, it is masons, unskilled. In this way, we need to group them. So who are these masons? Masons are those persons, those who actually do the work. And unskilled people are those who help them, right? Let us say a mason is doing a wall plastering. Now, he will be busy in doing the plastering. But there has to be someone who has to mix the cement, the water, who has to carry the cement from one place to other place, who has to carry the sand from one place to other place. So he is called as a helper. So we call him as a unskilled labor. And always the unskilled will get less paid, uh, less paid compared to the skilled. So that is why we have done this differentiation, right? So next coming to the units, we already know how this units has to be written. Now coming to the total quantity. So this total quantity, what I've written it here, right? For the shuttering work, go back to the same schedule here. So you can see the shuttering quantity, how much it is written? 6241. The same thing I've taken it here, 6241. Coming to the reinforcement work again, 253 metric ton, it's written here. So I'm writing 253. Let us say I'm changing something from 250 to, to 300 automatically everything will get changed here the same will be reflected here as well right yeah similarly whatever you have it there right the same thing i have put it here right uh, try to do the same thing for example again for the wall plastering you can see it is 15300 square meter of the wall plastering wall plastering has to be done so that is the reason you can see here 15300 i have written it here but i am writing it twice because for one i am writing it for masons and the second is for the unskilled people, right? Yeah. After that, number of days. Again, it's understood for us. If you go back here, we have this duration written here, right? 30, 52, 386, 382, 307, 294, 296, 60, 296. Whatever you have it here, the same thing I'm going to write it here. The same thing you can see it here. Now coming to the important thing, that is a productivity norms or day, right? So in the previous lecture, we had seen this... Uh, coefficients right so where is that coefficient yeah we had seen this coefficients like 4.4 0.5 this were for the material coefficient for cement how much bag it's going to happen if it is one cubic meter sand how much it will happen similarly for the labors also we have the coefficient so what i'm trying to tell is let us say if you're deployed one carpenter and one helper then per day he can do 3.5 square meter of the work similarly if you are deploying a one bar bender and one helper for one day, he is going to do 0 0.175 metric ton of the work. Similarly, in terms of PCC work, if you have an unskilled person or an unskilled labor per cubic meter in one day, I mean, uh, in one day, he can do 0 0.283 cubic meter of the PCC work. Similarly, a mason can do 1.978 cubic meter of the work in a single day. Similarly, for whatever work you have here, for example, let us take concrete work. So what a mason can do? So one mason can do 0 0.35 cubic meter of the work in one day. So in this way, this productivity norms has been written here. Now the question is that from where did I get this? So this productivity norms, usually when you work for the bigger companies, the companies have their own productivity norms based on, the based on their uh, research, based on their experience, based on their past uh, projects, the way they have completed, they try to do all this analytics and they get that this is a productivity that we need to consider so that our project can be finished. So 
this productivity will change from company to company. So I've taken uh, productivity from uh, few few things I've taken from the Google uh, and few things I've taken it from my uh, seniors and my uh, faculties, right? Yeah. So these are the productivity norms what I have. You can consider all these productivity norms, right? Uh, there is a lot of research and all behind this that uh, you have to do a lot of research. Uh, you, you need to see uh, your previous projects and all and how uh, how you have, how you have done the projects i mean how fast you have done the projects what is the output of the laborers i mean what is the output of a mason and all based on it you are going to arrive at all these productivity norms so again this uh, again depend from company to company and all right but for our understanding we'll try to take all these values whatever i've written it here now coming to the asking rate how do you find the asking rate per day it's again the simple thing whatever quantity you have it here right divided by number of days the same asking rate per day you are going to get see whatever you have it here right so the same thing whatever you have it here the same thing you are, you are going to get it here 38.14 yeah it's 38.14 same thing right yeah now coming to the interesting part that is about the how to find these quantities yeah for that what i need hmm. now let us say in august how many shuttering how many shuttering for how many carpenter and helper is required so what i have to do for this the simple calculation is that i'll do it here the simple calculation is that what is the average rate per day it is uh, sorry yeah how do you do this so we'll go back to the top so in the month of which i need to find august i need to find in the august i need to find the shuttering quantity so if i go to the shuttering work and if i go to the august how much amount of work is supposed to happen 326.75 so 326.75 is the amount of work that is supposed to happen. So I'm going to divide it by the productivity. That is what I'm trying to tell you. See, one carpenter and one helper can do 3.5 square meter of a work per day. What is the total quantity that I have to do in the month of uh, August? I have to do 326 square meter of the work. So I'll divide it by 3.5, right? So 3.5 is the productivity norm. And I'll hit the enter button. What is happening? I'm getting 93.35. Let me make use make use of a format cells and let me uh, put it in terms of zero. Okay, yeah. So that means I require 93 carpenters and helpers for the entire month. This is for the entire month what I've taken. Now go back to the, okay. Now again, go back to the August month. See, I'm doing for the August only, but I'm writing it in, in, in the September column. Don't get confused here. So now coming to coming back. So what I what I'm supposed to do now? Okay, let me open close the bracket and open the bracket. Yeah. So this is whatever answer I got. No, ninety three. That is for the entire month. But again, go back to the month of August. Yeah. Go back to the month of August and check in the month of August how many days you are going to work. So how do you check that again? Yeah. So my shuttering work is here in the August month, 11th August, I'll be starting that work, isn't it? 11th August, I'm going to start That means August will have 31 days. Out of that, if you're working 11 days, 31 minus 11 comes out to be 20 days. That is only 20 days you're going to work. So what you need to do, divide it by 20 now and hit an enter button. What answer you're going to get here? Five is the word, right? So that means in the month of August per day, you need to have five carpenters and five helpers so that by the end of August, you are going to achieve this much amount of shuttering quantity. That is how much it is 326.75 square meter of the work will be finished in the month of August. If you are deploying five carpenter and five helper to do the work right in this way, you need to do similarly, we'll try to do it for some other now coming to the yeah. We can do for the September as well. I'll try to do it. I'll do it for the September as well. Yeah, is equal to what is the first thing you need to do? Go to the month of September shuttering work. I'll go to the month of September. It is 490.13. Okay, so first it's always better. Uh, try to put an open bracket here. Yeah, so you got a total quantity divided by the productivity norms. So how do you find the productivity norms? Come back here. Yeah, 
So what is the productivity norm? It's 3.5. That is total quantity divided by per day how much he is supposed to do. Right. Close the bracket. Now again go back to the September because now whatever answer let me let me put an enter button here. See this 140 what you are getting no that is for the entire month you are going to get. But we have to go back to the what item we have to go back to the shuttering quantity and we have to see when is the end date right so for that this is one uh, option that i hide it here let me f j h i j k -N. yeah yeah so this is a finished date for the shuttering work so when you are going to finish this on 20th August 2020, that means September, October, now, December, every month you are going to work, right? So that means whatever answer you are getting it here, right? Let me go back. Whatever answer you got it here, no, that has to be divided by 30 because in September we have 30 days. So that is the reason I'm taking 30 year and I'll hit an enter button. So that means again in the month of September, you require five uh, carpenters and five helpers to do that much amount of work, right? Similarly, try to do it for the October month as well. Again, the concept remains the same. What you need to do, I'll do it manually this time. Uh, October month I need to do. I'll go back to the October here. And in the October, I'll take the shuttering quantity. October, it is 184.38. So 184.38 divided by 3.5 is the productivity. So total I require 52.68. Yeah, sorry. I have to take 506. Sorry for that. It, it, it is 506. Yeah, 506 divided by 3.5. So I'm getting 144.57. Let us say 145 number of carpenters and uh, helper is required. But again, uh, look at the finish date here. Yeah, you have this finish date here. Okay, it got hiding again. Starting duration. Okay, finish date is here. Yeah, shuttering work. You're finishing on 20th August. That means again, in the month of October also, you're working for all how many days in October we have? 30 days, right? Let me try to verify it. October. Yeah, October we have 31 days. Good. So if you have 31 days, divide this answer by 31. So that means 4.66 is what I'm getting. Let us consider 5. That means again in the month of October, again in the month of October, you require 5 carpenters and 5 helpers to do this work. In this way, you need to do all the calculations right so explain it only for the shuttering work try to do it for the reinforcement as well i'll exp i'll be explaining the reinforcement work in the next lecture right so but try to complete uh, for the shuttering work everywhere like october is done again november december jan feb wherever it is required you can take it as a kind of assignment and you can try to fill it so once you fill everything you are going to get the total number of you know labors that is required for the total project that is i mean for the for the entire project you are going to get the total number of manpower right similarly yeah anyhow in the next lecture i'll be explaining about the reinforcement works we'll try to understand that in the next lecture i hope uh, this is understood up to here we'll see you back in the next lecture thank you